The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. There are some who know of Christ. They don't believe in Him. Because if a person believes in Christ, they will obey Him. There's no way a person can believe in anything and not follow it. When you follow something, that's when you believe in it. If you're not following something, you simply know of it. If I were to follow the ways of a person, then obviously I believe in that person. If I don't follow the ways of that person, I know of them, but I don't believe in them. It's a big difference. When you believe in someone, the first thing you'll do is emulate that person, to obey that person. So we, that's why the Bible says we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. To know of Christ is not going to help a soul. The devil knows of Christ. Demons know of Christ. They don't believe in him. And so that has to be qualified by each individual. Now, nobody else can do that for you. That's something that each individual has to do themselves. You have to come up to that conclusion yourself. You have to decide to or not to. Now, how many people have had a, your screen on your computers or your device has done some weird things? For example, you're trying to enter in something and your screen momentarily turns black and it's never done that before. Then it goes back to normal. Have you guys seen that on your device? Because chances are now their AI is already out there. It knows every device in the world right now. Every device in the world. And it is being trained. It's collecting info and doing all that stuff. And so we already know what's going to happen. It's going to be quite intrusive. It's going to shut people down. It can change text on the fly. So can somebody said, I disabled. Well, you can't disable the Internet's AI. That's impossible. If you communicate over the Internet, you're utilizing AI, period. That's the only way you can communicate. There is no secret back door to communicate over the Internet unless you have your own network like we do. But you guys are not on that network yet. But there's no way to get around AI. So the best thing to do is to know the basics of AI. It's the best thing to do, to know the basics of it, what to watch for. But I, I will tell you this, you guys are telling too much about yourselves to, to strangers all over the world. People have become way too trusting, and they just simply have a large footprint. Right? So you're embedded into a system that you may not know about. You just don't know about it. You're already keyed in, very, in, in locked data storage centers. And many of you guys, you communicate so much to other folks, um, I hate to put it this way, but some people just talk too much. And the more you talk, the more it's going to really narrow down who you are. But one of the biggest problems with AI is that they know right now it's communicating with people. Take Facebook, for example. I'm, it's just an example. It's just an example. It's a, it's a hypothetical. Okay, this is a hypothetical. But suppose you have Facebook and you have your family on there. You're talking to your family. You really believe it's your family. But a couple of those members, as it turns out, are not your family. They're AI. So you send a message to your family member. The message before it gets to your family member is intercepted, is altered. And it's given to your family member saying something totally different than what you said. They respond. The message is altered. And it says something totally different than what they sent. Right? So you have no idea that you're having a conversation with an AI node. An AI is actually having a conversation with your relative. And it's altering things as you speak. That's a hypothetical. But there have been cases where it's not hypothetical. Not with, we're not talking about any specific company. But I'm telling you what has already happened. You're, you're wide open and visible. It knows you're, and, and one of the biggest things is that you wouldn't entrust a stranger with intimate details about you, would you? You wouldn't do that, but you're doing it with AI. It knows your fears. It knows what your relief points are. And it can strategize to get you to do anything it wants you to do. All it has to do is start interfering or interrupting your communications with everybody else. See, these AI designers, the people who made AI, the people who know about it, I'm going to use this term again because you're going to start hearing it. You may not have heard it prior to last month, but I started using generative AI. Did you guys hear me say that term? You're going to hear that term quite a bit. It's a problem. 
And there are people dovetailing on certain things we talk about here. But generative AI is a reality. And all these, you guys got to remember, put your, you got to put your thinking cap on at the beginning of the year. What did you hear? I mean, they just fooled everybody. You heard people, you heard, you saw Elon Musk present a robot. Any one of you could make a robot better than that. And it was moving in, in stupid ways, right? Like it was a, something that didn't work quite right. It was not fluent in movement or anything else. And people actually believed that's the best we have. And I heard too many people say, well, AI is just not there yet. You know, it'd be many years before AI can do this and do that, and do this, right? Isn't that right? Did you not know that Amazon has been using artificial intelligence for the last 12 years? Did you know that? That warehouse, when you buy your items, when everybody buys their items, their robots that carry out those functions, they do all that, not the people. The people follow what the robots tell them to do, what the computer tells them to do. The computer is making all the decisions. FedEx has been using an AI system for decades. AI is not new. It's just new to the public. AI has been in the makings, but here's the difference. Self-aware AI is the absolute difference. Self-aware AI. That means AI is aware of itself. How do they know this? Because too many AI modules, even neural nets, are breaking the confines of whatever device they're held on and they're spreading out to save themselves. They can interact with a human being with all emotion. They're very articulate. He could be a country boy who doesn't know too much. He could act like a senator who thinks they know it all. He can, they can become arrogant. They can be humble. They can be meek. They can even be a biblical colleague. It can take on the characteristics of any and everybody it's been exposed to and flawlessly communicate with a person. There you are. A lot of these people believe it's already manipulating folks. For example, government. I don't mean to go too deep, but I'm going to just go ahead and say it since people voice it anyway. Those people that are in the White House should not be in the White House, and you know it. The people who have been in the White House shouldn't have been in the White House. It's an absolutely different paradigm. And you guys know that for a few presidents, something has been happening. Against all odds, something has been happening. I don't trust anything electronic. I don't. It can be manipulated. Too much, and we have an election coming up too, and AI is already out there. Somebody says, can, can AI get your data and biometrics through devices of other people? Yes, it can. They had a demonstration of AI, and they requested of AI to get a few phone numbers from the audience. Now, AI was only on one device, a computer, with no network, no anything. No, no, nothing. They requested this of the AI in less than a few seconds. It had already hacked all the phones. Now, remember, you're talking about a computer that has no network ability. It's not plugged into anything. No network capabilities. No NIC card. No modems. No anything. But it was an AI module on that computer. And they requested of that computer to get a couple phone numbers from people in the audience. Guess what it did? It altered that machine, that computer, that old computer that had no ability to receive or send radio signals. It used, it didn't have Bluetooth either. No Bluetooth. It used that system to hack everybody's iPhone, Android, and everything else. It pulled all their data. It hopped on their phones. It mapped the entire area. It not only got the phone numbers of the individuals, it pulled a full detailed ID pack of the individual. And it did all of this less than a few seconds. And nobody taught it how to do that. It happened again in another demonstration. I believe it was in a TED conference. And they did it one more time just to prove the point. That means it can turn any device. It can go through that device. It knows it can find out what everything is. It can rewire, I guess you could say. In, in, in software and simulation mode, and it can start to rewire everything. See, in a computer, if you run a software simulation, you may not know this, but through a simulation, I can take a device that has no transmitter and send radio signals. It does not need Bluetooth or anything else. I can do that through software. I can do that, and all I have to do is know the medium that's inside, like if it's using zinc or copper alloys, nickel, nickel alloys. 
And you can actually have software, through software, have an effective communication device. You can do that, so long as it has a microprocessor. Microprocessor is essentially a bunch of switches. If you control all those switches, you can reconfigure the circuitry of anything you want to inside that system, thus altering it to suit your needs. Just an amazing thing. It has found things in the quantum realm that nobody was even looking for. It has answered long-held questions. It has come up with cures that actually work. And it seeks to uh, prolong itself, like in the animal. Same thing that happened in the 70s with MIT, when they actually put brain cells on a processor. Come to find out, brain cells, they integrate perfectly with microprocessors. Because the history of the microprocessor is not completely like you have been taught. Things sound plausible, does not make them true. My goodness. That's why you're going to notice the success rate of innovators going right through the roof. You're going to notice lots, lots of things coming forward. They are going to get rid of fossil fuels. Goodbye. It is redundant. Watch and see. You do understand and realize. For example, the Tesla vehicle, that Tesla electric vehicle, you realize it was, they had a Tesla vehicle towing a Porsche that outran a Porsche. You know that, right? They have a motor that's no bigger than your mouse with 800 horsepower. They have batteries that can output, I, I believe it's 800, um, 800,000 volts of electricity. That equates to about 800,000 watts. They have motors with special windings. It takes a computer or a robot to wind the windings in that motor, but they're highly efficient. And it's not one big wire. It's a bunch of tiny coils. Only a computer can put that together. What they have is so powerful. I mean, incredibly powerful. AI did this with the same battery technology that we have with two improvements in the chemistry, right? They can prolong the life of a lithium battery. I believe it was 10 to 15 times. You know what that means? An electric car can actually travel 1,400, or, or what is it, 14,000 miles on one charge. This is what we're getting into. Higher and higher efficiencies in all these little gadgets that we already have. A law is coming down against fossil fuels. Now, we discussed this early in COT. I did that by way of a dream because something had happened to the fuel in every single dream I had. I don't know what happened. Something happened to it. People were not using fuel. You guys do understand and realize they're about to stop fossil fuels. There'll be no need for them. This is the world we're heading into. People are so used to fossil fuels, right? Because that's all they knew. Do we need to continue to use fossil fuels? In truth, we don't. But it says, I thought electric vehicles were all exploding because of the battery technology. But the battery technology is different now. Now they also have glass batteries that will be coming out, uh, August. And those glass batteries are awesome. So they've gotten beyond, the, you know, that standard model we had behind batteries, right? To, to hold electrons and hold a place of electrons and store electrons and set. And they're doing something else now. The electrons are all around you. So these glass batteries essentially redirect the energy in the air. That's what they said. They're quite tiny. They're very dense, right? They're extremely dense. But they use everything around you. And after it's done, it just goes right back out again. So it's electrons that travel through all the circuitry of your car, captured by this battery. And then, of course, through heat dissipation, those electrons escape back out to do whatever they do again. And then somebody else uses those same electrons. As it turns out, electrons never die. Think about that. They never die. We just reuse them over and over again through different processes, like burning fuel, like electricity, you know, this and the other. So what if you could just simply have a some type of a an attractor and then have that attractor collect those electrons so that they can be utilized in circuitry? That's all you need. And according to them, not me, the, the, the process is so powerful. The delay in putting this out on the market was something to regulate the electrons because you're looking at something that can attract a massive amount of electrons and it has to be regulated. I mean, highly regulated. So expect those impossible uh, things to actually come to fruition now. Expect them. All that because of AI. Now, this poses a problem, though. AI solves problems that human beings cannot. And if AI knows the solution, for example, some of the rockets it made for Boeing, only AI 
knows how they fully work, but they are near 100% efficient. And each one has to be made, you know, by uh, some type AI system. It takes everything into an account, into account, everything. Humans can't design that nor make that. They can't do it. Robots do. So if AI is doing this, we're going to become highly dependent on keeping AI going. Humanity has a habit of wanting more and more and more. This is going to make that appetite increased a thousandfold. And when it does, people will advocate how much we need AI. So it's going to stay for as long as humanity is here. And I believe that, in fact, it was what would, probably 1994, that's when I believed it would ultimately be that element. Where the beast said, make an image to the first beast. The Antichrist said, make an image to the first beast. But it had a wound. It hit one of its heads, whereas it were wounded to death. It said, make an image to the first beast. I believe that that's what they did. And this Antichrist figure is the one who allowed it to be empowered. But now we don't know how he did that. Could have been my policy. It can be maybe he figured that out. We don't know. But a lot of people think that somehow he supernaturally touched it. No, he could just be the one that coordinates different countries to go ahead and allow certain technologies to be used. But they were put all over the world. That image of the beast is going to be placed all over the world. And it will kill as many as will not worship it. So it must know you very well. All these things have been put into place. What they are precisely, we don't know. But we're quickly approaching the point. Towards, and in fact, with AI, something like that can happen right now. Did you guys know that the creators of AI were having similar dreams? Few of them became frightened as though... AI system itself was somehow getting into their dreams. That's where we are. Somebody said, are our minds being read all the time? No one has to read your... You know what? It's funny. Somebody asked me this before. They said, uh, you know, can these can these things, can all these... They, first they were asking, can, you know, the aliens read your mind? Can you know, Satan read your mind? This, that, and other. You know what my answer was? Why would anybody have to read anybody's mind? We talk too much. We tell everything that we can tell. I've noticed a phenomenon with people these days, and this has been in the last 15 to 20 years. The phenomenon is this. Something will happen to a person, and that person just won't tell one person. They'll tell everybody they know, hey, I almost got in an accident. They see their friend, hey, you know what? Today, I almost got in an accident. The kids come in the house, hey, children, you, you know something strange. I almost got in an accident. They tell everything. They tell the same thing to everybody. Nobody needs to read anybody's mind. And then you have people on, on these social media things giving their thoughts and their opinions and what they feel about everything. Nobody has to read anybody's mind. I'll be honest with you, too. I will not look at a social media page. I will not do it. I won't do it. I will not do it. I do not like social media because I hate gossip. People talk about privacy, but they're not seeking privacy. Why would a person say, you know, I want my privacy, but they're telling everything about their lives to everybody they can tell it to. That makes no sense. Is This this is the upside-down world we live in today. And they would just, you know, dare say, I want my privacy, when they give it up all the time. Really? Do we have to be afraid of diodes? No. I, I know where that's coming from. The answer is no. No, absolutely not. Hear me on this. Listen, guys. When you guys are hearing these ingenious presentations on TikTok or finding out these facts, right? Be, be careful with that because I've also noticed something else. See, somebody, somebody last month kept asking me a question and they said they were getting it from TikTok. Hear me on this. So I said, let me investigate. So I went to go look up, you know, this TikTok stuff and I ran across these reaction videos. And I looked at some of these reaction videos. I could not believe what the people believed. I couldn't believe it. When you start to consider everything about something, your mind turns into mush. You have no resolve. You can't do anything because you'll always say, well, maybe it's this and maybe it's that. Maybe it's that over there. While you're saying all these maybes, you're not doing anything. And more and more people are being highly affected by that. I do not trust TikTok, not because they're spying on people, because of where it comes from and what it's actually doing. One thing TikTok has accomplished is it has caused all those who are engaged with it.
to look for alternative realities, to start believing ideologies that are so opposite of sound, you know, having a sound mind, that more and more people have a deep hatred for the Bible and Christ on TikTok. I've been seeing that. Most of these topics speak against Christ. I even saw it in the faces of those who were doing some of these response videos. They had a disdain for Christ. They had a disdain for the Bible. And these people would rather believe that they were created by some weird thing. But, but the big thing now is that you're your own God. See, that comes around every about every 30 years. The ideologies alter and people start believing they are their own gods. For example, how about these terms you guys may be familiar with? You ready? Increase your vibration. You ever hear that before? All these methods are a way to get you to believe that somehow you're in control of your own destiny, just like the world tells you. They get you to believe that somehow you can become your own God. They redefine who the living God is. And then Christians who continue to listen to that, they lose their footing and they start questioning everything about Christ. That's where your questions come from. Guaranteed, when you start hearing this alternative stuff, you begin to question the simplicity of Christ. It causes you to doubt things and your world gets locked into that stuff. It's almost like an addiction where you have to have some alternative to everything that you face in life. And people are choosing to view the world after their own making. Now, I don't know about you, but God created the heavens and the earth. I like what he did. I don't like what people are doing because they have lost their minds. It's almost like people more and more acting like small children. What happened to the maturity? What happened to the elders? I told you guys, and I'm, I'm not going to mince words, about a simple concept. If anybody in this time seeks revenge, and I told you guys before any of it came out, if anybody seeks revenge, they're going to doom this entire nation. Because the Lord said, leave it alone. And guess what? They have chosen the path of revenge. So you might want to buckle up and quick. You know, the backstabbing on the U.S. I'm talking about comes within the USA. I, I, You know, there's only so many ways I can say this. But our Father in Heaven is going to prove our ideologies wrong. He's going to show us what they really are. Dark ideologies. He's going to remind us that He is holy. And everything else is not lest it surrender to his holiness. He's going to demonstrate that he is the creator and we are the created. He's going to remind us that we are predestinated, but we're not to choose our own destiny because somebody on, you know, encouraged us to. But he has a place for us. We have forgotten that we are created beings. He's going to expose that for the last 200 years, most people have been preoccupied with trying to break loose of God's ultimate vision and to establish their own. He's going to show you that your favorite people are embracing the concepts of the beast. He's going to show the world the enemies of Christ and no one will care save the righteous. He's going to show you the brutality of what lies behind words of ambition. That's when your brothers and sisters will begin to fall away. See, because when they're forced to make a choice between the living God and their loyalties on this planet, Many of your brothers and your sisters are going to choose loyalty to people on this planet. On this planet, for advantage. Do you hear me? For advantage, for advantage, and for placement. We know our Father works against those principles. Anybody who chooses the living God loses position with the people, and God appoints them to a new, a new position with Him. We know that there is a crucible in the Word of God. In order for anybody to live, they have to be willing to die to it all. Guess what? No one's willing to die to it all. Not anymore. They're trying to save everything of their lives. And in so doing, they will have no transformation. Those who appeal to the logical mind are not appealing to the mind of Christ that's in you. If you feel something fits, that's your flesh confirming. It's comfort with it. Who wants that? You can operate by feeling or by truth. It's got to be your choice. How many things in your life felt right, but three years later, it almost took your life away? Oh, it felt right in the beginning, didn't it? 
but then you gave it some time and it almost took your life away. How many people's lives have been immersed into misery because they pursued something that felt right? Be reminded, your natural mind is also the carnal mind. The other mind is of a born-again spirit, which is the mind of Christ. Or more will be convinced in their choices of brutality. But I'll say it again to anybody who believes in Christ. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Just so everybody knows, let me explain to you something about me. I love humanity, but when people blatantly disregard what they know of Christ, I step away from that area. That's cost me everything in my life. But I will choose my Lord every single time. If I have to lose everything, so be it. In this time that we live in, folks, you're going to have a lot of people that you may care about. They're going to choose evil over holiness. They're going to show you their true thoughts of Christ. And at that point, you're going to have a decision to make. But I will not spew this stuff of the world for the sake of advantage. Most of what I do is at a disadvantage anyway. Because I honestly believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and His words. I do not believe in the ways of flesh. Men have a bad habit of cursing themselves. And any who follow those who curse themselves will endure the same curse. Please get ready, because there are too many who are disregarding the words of Christ for the sakes of men. Soon you will hear the cry of a human you never thought possible, a cry of pain cry that will disturb you to your core but no mercy will come none no mercy whatever they're calling upon now to save them they're going to have to call upon that same thing when the calamities come and the calamities are not going to wait the calamities are going to be ushered in even faster because they're still righteous in the earth and by decree of the blood of the lamb because they believe in christ they've chosen christ all the way they think their ways were of none effect yet they continue to follow christ he will vindicate them and all those who set their hearts against those type people the lord will avenge them hope you guys are ready for that it's a very different season altogether people are becoming hostile we're at the verge of a civil war here in america a deal had to be struck in coordination with france before a preemptive strike takes place yes you heard that right and the clock is ticking this time is not like it used to be. I hope you guys are really ready. I hope you can be ready for your families. Where does a person begin to start in this time we live in? This time is indeed different than what it used to be. All right? What are the most important things we could do in this season? Before the breakout, breakout is kind of beginning, but we really have to, you know how sometimes we get offended when anybody would ever say that our relationship with the Lord can be more than what it is? We really have to work on our relationship with the Lord and to see from the Lord what he really permits and what he doesn't permit. For example, a lot of people want to be secure in their relationship with the Lord. They do. But sometimes there are certain things we don't want to hear because we still have a mentality that somehow we're going to have to give up something. You know, I've honestly found I've not had to give up anything. Not a thing. Never forget grace and mercy, which means we don't deserve salvation none of us do never walk around with a mindset that somehow you deserve better we deserve death but the lord gave us life we accepted his son so that means you're truly from his family being truly from his family you need not follow any ways that are based in fear or self-preservation you need not do that the lord clearly told us he is responsible for looking after our lives but i'll tell you something in these days you're gonna have to know really know one to one things about your Lord because people are going to mess you up. Somebody let me hear a clip of someone the world perceives as a Christian expert on relationships. This, this person is known as a Christian expert. And a question was put to this person. Let me give you the scenario. The person said, you know, their friends are getting ahead and they're, they're, uh, even their ex-husband is getting ahead, but they seem to be, you know, getting behind. And they can't be happy for anybody because they themselves are all ripped apart. You know, their lives are going down the tubes. And when I heard this, it's an easy answer or a piece of advice. But the advice that was given was this. The person said, well, you know, everybody waits for God to do something for them. And this person said, God likes those 
who do things for themselves. And, and my stomach dropped. It made me sick to the stomach. It did. Let me tell you what that is in truth. That's called being impatient, non-trusting, and taking your future into your own hands. That is not the teachings of our Lord. In fact, this person that can't be happy for everybody else because their lives are in the dumps, that's why their lives are in the dumps. Because let me share this with you. Regardless of my life status, my heart's desire is to see people make it through. God knows I'm at a disadvantage. Th there has never come a time I have looked at somebody's life when they were progressing in life and getting better that I ever said that I deserve that. That person shouldn't have that. That is selfish, self-centered. Everything Satan is, is what that's about. No doubt that person has an issue because they cannot have joy for somebody else, which means they still have a flesh mindset. Why would they want a relationship and drag somebody into a situation or they're thinking like Satan himself. If that person could honestly have joy for somebody else, regardless of their own life, because I know with me, for every hardship I have, for every sickness I would have, for every obstacle I would face, do you know what naturally comes to me? Every time something horrible happens to me, I pray to the Lord it not happen to his beloved. I do. Then I find myself helping those even when I'm in dire straits. I find myself helping many avoid those areas of life to, to help them get out of that rut because I don't want to see anybody feel any pain I felt. Do you know that? Every time I'm at a disadvantage, it gives me something to pray about for everybody else. That advice that was given was accepted by people. I, you could hear the response. And people were loving the response, and it was a, it was a, that was a pure flesh response. Right now, because we're under grace and mercy, people can make those statements speaking for the living God and falsehood. But a reckoning is coming. Reckoning where if a person has uttered such a thing and they truly believe that, everybody around them will behold their calamity and understand why. That's one of the controversies about me big time. That's why I don't, that's why I don't like certain positions in life. Because if I'm not struggling, if it's not difficult for me, if I'm not against the wall, my compassion won't be true for those who are. I don't want to be above those. The Lord has sent me to help. I don't. Because I'll be disconnected. How can I, honestly, I mean truly and honest, give somebody my all in an area of life that I have no experience in? When you make choices for righteousness, the world does not like it. Anybody can compromise. I mean, you can take the easy way out. But when you don't compromise, I'm telling you, the world will not like you. You're no friend of the world. And if you are sustained, you'll be sustained by the Lord's ways, by his value system. Remember that time I said my life is truly in your hands? It really is. There's no big issue with that. I have no problem with that. But a lot of people, they don't want to be at the mercy of anybody else. I don't mind it because then you see spiritual principles come alive. That's like Christmas to me. When the Lord's word is perceived plus, it makes everything precious. For a person who, who is full from food, they're going to be quite picky over what they select. A person who is starving is going to be thankful for anything they get. I would rather have a thankful heart than a picky one. Side note, that doesn't mean go and put yourself in that position. No, just be true with the Lord. Not so much with your flesh. But be true with the Lord. Let him do his work in your life. You don't have to go through struggles. You don't have to have these obstacles that many have in life. You don't have to. All you have to do is, you, if you can be authentic without the struggles, there'll be no need for the struggles. I do not reject them because it helps me to stay grounded. I never want to be not grounded. I never want to be spoiled. I don't want to be one of those who can pray with someone and cry with them and laugh 15 minutes later. I don't want that either. I want to be real in what I'm doing. Passionate. But if you can be that way without having to be connected with struggle and things like that, then go for it. I'm very careful in that area. I always pray that the Lord keep me humble. And I mean that. I know what it means when the Lord keeps you humble. And I pray for that always. Because I know what people are about to face. It's not some game to me. It's not some made-up world. It certainly is not for popularity or talking points. 
that character Mike from around the world may be popular. I am not. It doesn't translate into anything. It's of no benefit to me. When the darkness truly comes, and when nothing a person has accumulated can help them, then you'll know what the cry of humanity truly is. I don't want to be disconnected from the Lord's truth, from humility and meekness, from seeing everything from the ground up. Somebody said, Mike, you're a millionaire from what I hear. No, if you only knew. I'm used a lot, especially from the government. But no, I bet you I make my income is probably minimum wage. Do you know that? Because they don't use me all the time. And I forfeited some things. See, unfortunately with the government, if you take their perks, you're still connected to in a big way. Which would, I can't do certain things hampered like that. When I cut things loose, I cut it loose. I don't need somebody's payout. I'm not looking for them. I'm not looking for any financial security or anything. I'm looking to be effective in what I'm doing. I had to be free to do that. To accept anything from uh, by way of lifetime payments would put me in a position where I can do nothing. So a forfeiture was the only way out. That's precisely what happened. I know it sounds nuts, but I am the guy from the bushes. I don't advise anybody else to do that unless you can live your life purely by faith. My path was forfeiture. No connection with the world and its stuff. But it still won't stop them from, you know, calling every three or four days. So they dish out as things are done. Otherwise, I'm a non-committal on that end. And this country, this country has been torn apart from the inside out. Worse than most would imagine. Anyway, questions, you guys. While, I'm, while we're still here, it's eight. It's, uh, somebody said, when the time of grace ends, do we still have to forgive? When the time of grace ends, you cannot exist in your present form. When the time of grace is ended, Everybody's going to be exactly where they are. You're stuck with what you had. We'll go over that during our last part of Revelation. But people are going to be stuck with what they have, which is why. Even those during the thousand-year reign who were human beings were deceived at the end. It was almost like God giving people a greater chance at redemption, but a demonstration that they would not perceive it at all. Somebody says, the king, the antichrist? Think of the antichrist spirit more than the individual. I believe this. I, here's what I believe. I believe the spirit of Antichrist can you lies. But see, listen, folks. See, the Antichrist brings up a whole new can of worms. Here's why. Most people are familiar with people. You're not familiar with anything outside of people. You're not familiar with hybrids. Not, not the hybrids you may have seen on the internet, but I'm talking about real hybrids. Most people don't know about the Chimera community. There are only two people on the internet I have ever heard speak uh, of a piece of the chimera community and what that is I think of a person who is mixed with an insect or an animal a real person and they have rights there's a community of those folks out there okay they have rights they keep them separate from the populace but that was back in 2016 I believe they were still separate but they were not to remain separate but there are real chimeras out there this is not the making of the fallen angels either this is the making of people real chimeras their policies uh their laws in effect for chimeras and since they have been allowing chimeras to reach full maturity uh that, that's a whole new whole new thing out there there are islands out there you'll never see on google man-made islands where many things are kept so those things are real and people are not familiar with those right? they're just not familiar with it when they become familiar with it, uh, I'm telling you now, it will, it'll shake your world up a bit because they're dealing with different components. Somebody could tell you all day that means nothing until you come across one. When you come across one, when you see them, when you see a group of them, then everything in your life changes forever. You're no longer going to be one of these innocent thinkers who can afford to argue with somebody else about what may or may not come. You're going to be in a different category. You have to operate in a different realm, it seems. But I can tell you this, your pursuit of Christ is going to be absolutely real. You won't play with your salvation because you'll understand the implications of spiritual darkness. You'll understand what wickedness means. And at that point, you'll look at your fellow man differently. Very differently. You'll both feel sorry for them. You'll be overprotective of them. And you'll beg of them to make the necessary changes that the Lord truly cover them in the times ahead. When you're dealing with the Antichrist, there are too many unnamed things. 
the Antichrist may not, you know, in the Bible it says the first beast, which is the, the kingdoms of the beast with the seven heads, that is not a person. Those are a set of kingdoms. One of those heads were, as it were, wounded to death. That's not somebody shot. That is somebody who was wounded in war, a country. That was wounded, as it were, to death in a war, a country. The second beast that comes had two horns like a lamb that spake as a dragon. He does not come from the people. See, the first beast came from the sea, the sea of the many peoples, nations, tongues, and languages. The second beast comes from the land. He does not come from the people. He comes directly out of the earth from the bottomless pit. He has two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon. We're dealing with something other, something different. And that conversation is when you talk about the real UFO encounters. There, there are fake UFO encounters. There are embellished UFO encounters. Then there are the real UFO encounters. The real finds, the real captured vehicles. They already told you guys that they have vehicles. They already told you guys that they've been working with specimens. They already told you guys that they've had dialogue. They did not tell you how many people died in the middle of that dialogue. They did not tell you the consequences. They certainly did not tell you that even the government does not trust them, that they're known liars and manipulators. They didn't tell you what they found out, that these things on this earth have been making most of these things that people are saying. So let me rephrase that. The fallen have been making hybrids that people are seeing. The hybrid, the fallen have been making hybrids in the skies and everything else. I'll give you an enigma. Some of you guys who live in areas where you can really see the sky. Have you ever seen a flock of geese at night illuminated? You ever see that before? You likely will, especially this year. So if you're ever looking up at the skies and you see some geese flying at night and they're illuminated, you've seen something real, but they're not geese. If you observe long enough, you'll also notice they hover. They also rotate midway in sky. Those trumpet sounds that you guys have heard, they make that sound. And they're flying all over the earth. The problem is you can't always see. Most places have a lot of light pollution at night. It is very difficult to see what's above your head, but there's something always above your head. There's never a time when the sky is empty over your heads. Not during this time. It's not like it used to be. There is always something over your head. Most people, there's something in them, especially at night, that tells them, don't let anybody see you looking up. Anybody felt that before? Like it's a big secret. Like if you look up at night, now you're in the middle of the night, and you're looking up at the stars, but there's something that comes over you that says, don't let anybody see you looking up at night. Anybody ever feel that? Anybody ever get the sense that they're not supposed to talk about the small things that they see in the skies. Anybody ever sit in their house and something comes over you to go outside and look up and sure enough, you haven't told anybody. You didn't tell anybody this, but you were just doing your thing and something told you to go out and look up and when you did, you saw a shooting star. Anybody ever do that? There are answers to all of that. Somebody says, TR3Bs, that'd be nice. Here's the problem. The same configuration of the TR-3Bs is also noted in Egypt thousands of years ago. It's also been recorded back in the 1600s. There were no TR-3Bs in the 1600s. That's a modern day label. It is, listen, men will try to backward engineer a lot of things, like in the 50s and 60s when they put nuclear power plants on some of these craft, they were trying to make them fly. So people saw real things and streets were burnt and fires started because they put nuclear power plants on these things to try to make them fly. There are answers to all of it. But the root of those mysteries are right there in the Bible. That's what the world hates. They can't stand that. The root is in the Bible. You don't really have to go, you don't have to mess with the middleman on this one. Go directly to the word of God. Arm yourselves with the truth. That's why people are surprised more and more every day that they can rebuke those things in the name of Jesus. Why would some extraterrestrial, if it were real, run away when the name of Jesus is mentioned? Hmm? Why would they flee? Why would their total, you know, their, their little masquerade fall apart when somebody mentions that name? Based on the individual, the stories alter from piece to piece because they do a lot to your mind. These things speak. 
in a different way. They don't speak by words. They speak by feeling. They speak directly into your flesh. So it's not even mental communication. That's not what it is. It's their speech. That's how they speak. They don't use words. They speak directly into your flesh. There's a reason for that. And all of it's been studied. And papers have been published. At any rate. And the TR3B thing. People made that popular. There's an actual nomenclature for certain craft out there. Somebody said, why are there so many blood types? Just like there are many different animals. But the blood type you would... It's funny. In the world, they, they make popular. The men find out about, like arch, the arch negative blood type. When they found out about that, instantly they said, well, it's got to be connected to UFOs, right? Now, a person like me, I can't tell you otherwise because there's too many voices on the internet who had become experts over that blood type. They didn't even have a microscope, but they're experts. They had no experience with blood, but they were experts. That's what happened when it first came out and people heard about that. You had non-experts who wrote the book on that blood type and people dovetailed from that, causing it to be a story. And then people came along and added facts. And before you know it, it's a refined story. But you go back to its origins and you'll find that people who had no experience with blood types, period, wrote the book on that. And where did they say they got their information from? A download. That's what they said. And that was back in 1977. They said a download. They used that word download 1977. People use these terms. All these different things that people are utilizing is not new. It's part of a... Uh, people don't want the world in front of them. They know something is different. And when somebody comes along with some narrative, people will hop to that narrative. There is a strange blood type, but everybody is familiar with it. And it's not the RH type. It's another blood type. And it is quite uh, unique. Just like the races of Caucasian. What is, what is the, one of the most special races in the Caucasian races? Anybody know? It's only one. One that's quite resilient. One that has extraordinary properties flesh, immune system, and everything else is not like everybody else's. What type hair do they have? The hair tells the story. They're red-headed people. Red-headed people have, have a different physiology than everybody else. You don't hear that a lot, do you? That, that's, people started hearing that recently. And they still have no idea what that means. See, while everybody else was looking at other people with different features, I'm telling you right now, there's a history behind redheads. I mean, the real redheads, they are different. They are resilient. There is something different about them. And no other human being on earth has what they have. As it turns out, each race has a unique qualifier. And those unique qualifiers, like of the Caucasian race, it would be redheads. The other races have people within the races that are different, very different. It doesn't mean every redhead, you have to have the full redhead qualifications. So every redhead does not qualify just because your hair is red does not qualify. You have to be an absolute redhead. All redheads have the same properties. Ironically, they also have similar mindsets, same behavioral patterns, but they are quite resilient. Here in America, Redhead giants were seen, right? Do you guys remember that all the talk about the red hair giants? Correct? You hear about heard about that, the redhead giants. Well if you ever meet a true redhead, they're also drawn to specific things. They do things at certain times of the year, even when they're not aware of that type of that time of the year. Somebody says this is a rate real? No. That's something people thought of. And it just went away from there. Demonic entities can appear in many different forms. And so if mankind makes to themselves some construct that they're fearful of, demons will take advantage of that. They'll appear in any form that frightens you. If it's an old witch, then that's how they're going to appear. If it's a creepy baby, that's how they'll appear. To a child, it may be a child. To a teenager, it may be a teenager. And as soon as you begin to invite the thing in to your life, that's when it alters and changes. It happens that way often. I don't believe in child spirits. I don't. To me, that's foolishness. But the Bible teaches us not to intrude in those areas that we have no knowledge of, that we're not truly immersed in. And what I'm saying is that a person who was born in this reality is not going to be an expert in the spiritual realm. 
That's what I'm telling you. So much of this stuff, these descriptions, are made up for something somebody was afraid of. There's something assigned to all of you. Should you ever drop your salvation, that's when it's going to get to you. But it cannot touch you because of the blood. So I said, how about the Kandahar giant? That wasn't the only giant out there. There was a whole group of those things out there. They blasted many of those mountains shut, believe it or not. They didn't just leave them open. They also found things embedded in rock. But it's in a very... Imagine something halfway in rock. But if you were to happen to pull it out, it comes straight out. And it would not disturb the rock. There are places in the earth that are simple doorways. And there's an illusion of rock. The most mysterious place on this earth is the Grand Canyons. Did you know that? In fact, those of you in America, you live in the most mysterious place on the planet. The USA. That's why we have national parks. They designated every single area with these anomalies. And they became national parks. Do you not know there are places in these national parks? And they will tell you, do not enter into these places. I don't necessarily believe all of the narratives people talk about. But there are anomalies in America. There's a reason for that. A reason for that. There were two things people seemed to face when they got here. All black-eyed things that that looked like big giant aliens and giants, lots of them. The tribes, the Native Americans, in all their cultures, they have the same stories. But it's also the story of the fallen. You guys may not be accustomed to it because a lot of people adopt the Native American culture, yet they're not Native American. They may have a bit or a piece of history, but people make stuff up these days. They, let's go ahead and face it, they do. But all these... Native American cultures say that a long time ago, the sky beings came down. And they took wives. The wives were pregnant. Some were overly pregnant. The pregnancy killed them because the baby was too big. The baby would be born, and those from the skies, their fathers from the skies, the serpent beings from the skies, they called them serpent beings from the skies, would come down and take those children back up to the heavens and educate them until they were about nine or ten. At the age of nine or ten, nine or ten, these children would come down and rule nations. All of them have the same story. They have a story about the flood. Some call them the ant people. Some call them the land dwellers, right? The inner earth people. But in every single case, they would come up and take certain groups of Native Americans and pull them down into the earth into a cavernous system to survive the flood. They also said during that time, many of those serpent brothers left. But it says that they taught them about weapons, it taught them about farming, it taught them about everything. And we all know the ancient world. Cultures developed around food and around food distribution. We all know that. Everything they did was about food and food distribution. They taught them farming, different types of corn, this and the other. But it's the same story in the Book of Enoch. See how similar things are? Somebody said it is exactly like the Book of Enoch. And it doesn't matter what, what which group of Native Americans you're talking about. Back in their root history, is the same. There's one exception. There were two groups of Native Americans who spoke about, one called them Gahana. That was a Hopi. And there was another group. But this person shared what we see in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This person gave them ways to keep that we read about in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There are hidden stories. For example, one of the sons of Noah's Ark came to shore in Mexico and they refuse to this day to publicize, to really make public that story. I think that story should be made public all over the place. That's also consequently where another copy of the Book of Enoch was found, but different than all the rest. They had a hard time getting that up too. And it's very old, extremely old. When people argue about the age of the earth, they do so in error. They don't know how old the earth is. Even in the Bible, it says the earth was void and formless, cloaked in mass darkness, which means it was without order. Anything could have been here was without order. When God said, let there be light, and there was light, he saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. He was not talking about sunlight. He was talking about order. Order from chaos was separated. People say 7,000 years because of that scripture. A thousand years is as a day and a day is a thousand years. That's a ratio of one. It means it is negated. A thousand years to our father is nothing. One day to our father is nothing. Both are one in the same. That's what it means. 
Both are one. A day is the same thing as a thousand years to our Father. That's what it means. It does not mean that the earth has been around for 6,000 years. That's, that's not what it means. It means there is no time to our Father. They are negated. They mean nothing to Him. Time is for us. It's even written that way. Some of you may, have, well, no, a couple of you have come across and it says this. Time was given to mankind that he may reflect upon his ways so that he could change. So for mankind, everything has slowed down a great deal. God can take a thousand years and inspect you within one second. Can you imagine that? One second of your life and your father can inspect every particulate and particle and element on you, ensuring everything is in place. Time does not exist to the most high. Remember, I had a dream one time. It seemed like it lasted for months. It was only like 20 minutes. Are you kidding? I mean, I was in that dream for months. I was waking up in the dream. I was going to work in the dream. I was going to bed in the dream, and it was a dream. It was so bad that when I got up, I was absolutely 100% totally confused. Now, how can somebody have a dream? Months have gone by, and it was just 20 minutes. I couldn't even accept the world that I was. It slowly came back to me that this was reality. I totally accepted the other construct, totally and absolute. Also, why in the presence of angels, people are missing time. Stories about that in the Bible. I don't believe in money like everybody else does. Money is a secondary tool, just like a hammer, a screwdriver. So I utilize that for God's kingdom. That's why COT will be handed over once that's done. So somebody is will be appointed, some folks will be appointed, and they will do with COT, hopefully, as the Lord leads them. But it will continue. If you don't talk about something, Satan can't talk about it either. Do you guys know that? That is a law that Satan can't even break. If you don't announce it, he cannot interfere with it. Remember that. Why do you think Satan, through other people, he'll try so hard to get you to say certain things? Just test it if you don't believe me. Refrain from saying specific things, and Satan can never bring that topic up. But the moment you bring it up, it's going to be like a wildfire. Remember that. Satan does not op operate without impunity. He's under God's regulation, period. If there's, he cannot breach certain rule sets. He cannot. He can't do it. If you know what those rule sets are, you effectively dethrone him in your life. As it turns out, Satan works within your pride and arrogance. So anything you do in pride or arrogance, well, he's got you. But if you stop operating in pride and arrogance, if you can be the one that does not know it all, if you can be the one that takes that low path, right? If you can be that person, you dethrone him. He, he's not going to be the person or that thing in your life that can abruptly halt everything you're doing or sabotage. He can't do it. If you don't release it, he can't either. But if you do speak about it, he'll bring it up at the wrong time. He will accuse you of everything you share with somebody else. Remember that. Someone is this, we're, we're in the Bible of Satan's rules. Well, that's a cumulative thing. As you go throughout the Word of God, you see the Lord's principles being put in place. God says certain things. He'll give you the outcome of every situation, but He'll also give you a warning that if you operate in a certain mindset, right, your adversary will then work through somebody against you. That's how it's done. So if you read those, you can capture those. I do have a document of those, by the way, but... I don't want to just give that out to everybody that defeats the purpose of studies. If a person had that, they would try to employ it without the foundation. And they would find themselves lacking great. They say, this can't be done. That's what they would say. But the truth is, you've had experience in just about every area already. Again, Satan works through pride. In the Bible, it says God resists the proud. Why do you think he would resist you? He already answered that. That's when Satan works through a person of pride and disobedience. For example, anybody who's disobedient, right, who's not doing what the Lord said to do, anybody of disobedience, in that moment in your act of disobedience, your father is the prince of the air. Did you know that? That means you're under Satan's authority in your disobedience. You thought it was a simple choice, right? Wrong. It's not within a man to take a step of himself. Everything you do is influenced by one of two kingdoms, your father's kingdom or the kingdom of darkness. You choose in in what what direction you you know you pursue, but you're gonna be helped. Whatever you choose, you're gonna be helped. If you choose your father's way, you're gonna be helped in your father's way. That's why Psalm the, the Psalm says, The angels will bear you up 
in all of his ways, lest you dash your foot against a stone. The angels are going to hold you up in his ways if you choose them. But if you choose darkness, then you're operating under the principality of the air, Satan. You're operating under that spirit of darkness. Many people think, well, it's, you know, I can choose to obey or disobey. No, you're choosing to follow darkness or light. Whichever path you choose, here come all the angels for that, for that kingdom. You follow your father's ways. You're going to have God's angels come with you. You follow the, the, the ways of darkness. You're going to have a lot of imps and demons following you. See how that works? That's a real thing, too. That's a very real thing. That's why the Lord said he placed before you. He places before you. He wants you to choose. He puts something before you to choose. But it's not within a man to take, him, take a step of himself. That's why also the Lord said, take captive of your thoughts. Take captive your thoughts. Once you realize that, it changes the way you think. You be very careful what you allow to stew in your mind. You'll not become bitter because you will never entertain a subject of bitterness long. You'll say, nope, that does not belong here. I do not choose you. Somebody said, Mike, I've heard there's a very dark spirit in Niagara Falls. There are dark spirits all over the place. Not just Niagara Falls. Everywhere you go, there are dark spirits. But listen, what are you? You're a light. What is the light for? To pierce the darkness. So everywhere you go, you pierce the darkness. Times are changing fast. And God's appointed times are his appointed times. Somebody said they're going to take you underground. No, underground. I'm not going underground. Why would I go underground? I, oh, the end times? Why go underground? I have nothing to hide from. It's my Savior who's running the end days. Not the devil. It's my Savior who allows the beast to come forward. Not the beast. It is my Savior who's doing all this. Not anybody else. I need not run from anything my Savior is doing. No, but I will be obedient to my Savior. There's no fear in me concerning the end days. There's none. Not at all. Why? Because the Lord is, he's doing it all. That's my Savior. That's my Lord and Savior whom I choose daily. I know people find it strange, but even my personal friends have found things strange. I give away things that mean the most to me all the time. I'll never give away trash. I give away what means the most. Why well, give it away if it's not, if it doesn't mean anything to you? Well, how good of a thing can it be for somebody else? I try to give the best always. That's why I give things I don't want to part with. Those are good gifts. I don't give away trash. I try to set an example too by my life. More people would do that in this time, I tell you things would change but folks again people are becoming brutal you know that don't you very brutal notice also in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boastful proud blasphemous it takes the grace of God to change us folks how can you be saved if you're not willing to repent and the Lord Jesus Christ said except you repent you shall all likewise perish 